Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, coming to you from sunny Barcelona. Not a bad place to be licking my wounds after that really, really devastating result up at Newcastle United last night. I wanted to drop another video just to kind of continue to react to what we saw unfold at St. James's Park, to continue to react to the fact that it looks highly unlikely now that Arsenal will be playing Champions League football and talk a little bit about the reaction uh, to it all that I've seen on social media, that I've seen on TV, that I've heard from sort of friends, family, and just people I've been speaking to throughout the day. Had a lot of time to think about it, had a lot of time to process it. Long flight, um, well, not the longest flight, but a flight, uh, long journey to the airport, gave me plenty of time to sit there and sort of gather my thoughts. And look, there, there's no getting away from it. What happened last night was incredibly disappointing. And to see Arsenal go out with a whimper in the chase, in the hunt for the top four, is obviously incredibly disheartening as a fan because for, for a long, long time, we felt that even though there were some abject performances in there, even though there were times where this Arsenal side didn't look at the level required, didn't look good enough, didn't look uh, capable of, of being consistent throughout. We felt that at least spirit-wise, there had been a real, real turnaround. And I'm not saying that the boys didn't try last night, and I'm not saying that the boys didn't want it. I, I think that's really, really unfair, and I think that's a really lazy criticism that people throw at footballers more often than not. Of course, they want to win. Of course, they want to get through. Of course, uh, they want to be in the Champions League. Of course, they want to be playing in Europe's premier competition. It just felt to me like they froze on the occasion. It just felt to me like the pressure weighed them down. That combined with the injuries, combined with the fact that as a squad, we're not quite where we need to be, combined with the fact that some of our influential players have been a little bit out of form in recent weeks as well. I think when you put all those factors together, you can kind of begin to form some conclusion as to why Arsenal failed in the way that they did. I keep saying it, the club's objective at the start of their campaign will have been to get back into Europe. And as I've said to you guys on numerous occasions, the fact that Mikel Arteta was given that new deal or that new deal was announced straight after we uh, secured fifth place and Europa League football for next season is the biggest indicator of the fact that in the club's eyes, that was what the aim was. That was what the goal was. And we can have a debate and we can have arguments and we can go round and round and round in circles about whether a club of Arsenal's size should be accepting of that, whether a club of Arsenal's size should be OK with only aiming for the Europa League, particularly in a season where we didn't have European football as a distraction. That's a whole nother debate for another day. But based on the objectives set by the football club, Mikel Arteta has achieved them. His team have achieved them. The players have achieved them. And... They will feel that the decision in January not to go out and splash big cash on someone that they perhaps weren't 100% sure about. We know that they inquired about Vlavic. We know that he's someone they would have been quite happy to do a deal for. But we know that that deal couldn't happen. So rather than go, oh, shit, let's panic quickly. we got to bring someone in ASAP or we're going to be in trouble. Arsenal went, no, because this would deviate us from the plan. This would deviate us from the process. This would take us on a different path and this could potentially have a knock-on effect in the summer. And we, as a football club, didn't want that to happen. Why? Because when the club weighed it up, when the club looked at the players they allowed to leave and, and decided not to bring anybody in, they felt that they could still achieve their objective. Not yours, not mine, their objective of qualifying for the Europa League without doing that without bringing someone in and allowing those players that did leave to walk out the door. So they've taken a gamble. And as a consequence of us, perhaps you could say slightly overachieving, we are in the race for the top four, even still, even going into the final day. That is, in their eyes, ahead of schedule. Now, it's really difficult to take as a fan to see that sort of fruit dangling there and knowing that you can't get it, that you're not good enough to just snatch it, to take the opportunity. But what good is an opportunity if you're not good enough to capitalise on it? There's no point getting caught up and, and getting upset and being disappointed about the things that you should have done or the things that you could have done. You've got to look at why you couldn't achieve that. You've got to understand why, and you've got to move on. Now, unlike in previous seasons, when Arsenal failed to achieve their objectives and achieve their goals, this time, I think it's quite clear what we need. I think we need to add a top-level striker. I think we need to add more depth in the midfield. 
I think um, that we need to that we need to add more depth in the fullback positions. I think we probably need to add a bit more depth at centre back. Does is that William Saliba or is that someone else? I don't know. That question needs to be answered. But I think that you can at least see what is building and what is developing, what the core is and what we need to do, what the next steps are. Now, I didn't have a massive issue with Arsenal not doing major business in January. If, and I'm going to trust them, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, they didn't feel there was a, a, a deal worth doing or a deal that we could have done or a deal that we should have done. I will give them the benefit of the doubt because they had a good summer. But I'll tell you this, if going into the summer we don't get our ducks in order and we don't act and we're not decisive and we don't go and bring in players that I believe are required to take this team to that next level now, then I'm going to be really frustrated because my understanding and my acceptance of what happened in January was largely based around the fact that I believed that the idea was there was going to be another big recruitment drive in the summer. And so I understood why going big in January for someone that wasn't part of that overall plan and part of that initial plan could be counterproductive and could divert us from the path that we were on. But as I say, I was accepting of it on the basis that we're going to go out in the summer and do some business. And if we do that, I think we've got a good platform to build on, a better platform than we were building on prior. We've got some talented young players who need to have some experienced and quality players around them now. Talented boys who are ready, not talented boys in the making, not people who are still learning their trade, people who are ready to come into the team and impact it today. Get a few of those in and we're in really, really good shape as a football club. So it isn't all doom and gloom. It does feel like that now. And I still do feel like that. But the more I've been thinking about it today, the more I've been processing it and the more the, the raw emotion, the cloud of raw emotion moves away, the more I think I can see clearly that although there's still a hell of a lot of work to be done. And yesterday was a, a, a real reminder of that. A number of results this season have been big, big reminders of that. We're moving in the right direction overall in terms of the plan. Now, how long do you give Mikel Arteta to get us back in the Champions League? I don't know. I don't know. And we have to assess that on an ongoing basis. Um, but he's earned the right, based on what he's achieved so far, in my opinion, to have another crack at it next season. To have another summer where he can hopefully improve the squad with the support of the club and have another crack at it next time around. So that's my view. Um, hard to pick yourself back up after last night because, as I say, when the opportunity is there, when the fruit is dangling, you just want to snatch it and bite it off. But it doesn't always work like that in football. And um, and yesterday was a real stark reminder of how much work still needs to be done. That doesn't mean that no work's been done and it doesn't mean that no good work's been done. A lot of people have their opinion on the manager. They don't want him. They call him Pep's co-man, all of that rubbish. That's up to you. That's up to you. But don't pretend that you thought Arsenal were going to finish in the top four this season at this outset. Don't pretend that you were confident at Christmas that Arsenal were going to finish in the top four. Because more often than not, the same people that are super critical and won't accept what has happened so far um, are the people that were telling us that we were going to finish in the bottom half of the table, that Leicester were going to finish above us, that Villa were going to be much better than us. And you got that horribly wrong. So... I'm not, like everybody gets things wrong. We all get football predictions wrong. That's the beauty and the nature of the sport. But that just goes to show that we don't always know everything. And so we need to chill. We need to be calm. We need to support our club. And, um, and you know, let's get Sunday out of the way. If the unthinkable happens, great. It won't. So let's get Sunday out of the way and let's focus on hopefully having a really positive summer. Don't forget, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm back very soon with more. Cheers.